was when the operator was paging through the loud speaker system. The president's been shot, and they're bringing him to the emergency room. They've called from the emergency room, said uh, that they're bringing President Kennedy in. He'd been shot. I would have expected them to bring him to Parkland. It was the number one trauma hospital in that part of the country. When I saw the autopsy pictures, I thought somebody had really tampered with the whole thing, and it made me very suspicious. Parkland doctors were a serious problem for the U.S. government because they had provided evidence that the president had an exit wound in the back of his head. That means there was a shooter somewhere in the front, and that ran totally contrary to the official narrative of a lone shooter from above and behind. In order to probe that, you had to go back to Parkland and speak to these doctors. Dr. Perry and Dr. Baxter had just walked into that room ahead of me, and Dr. Perry was standing on the right side of the car the president was lying on, Dr. Baxter opposite him on the left side. And those x-rays that I've seen are wrong. I mean, they, they've done that at the autopsy. It was a lie. They really didn't. Tell the truth about it. What's more likely, Parkland doctors telling the truth or the autopsy telling the truth? I don't think my impressions have changed from the day of the assassination. How could a gunshot from the rear peel the scalp from the front back? The issue, in retrospect, was if Oswald was in the sixth floor depository, how could he have been shot from the front then? And so was there more than one assailant? There has to be at least one additional assessment. We have people who will testify that they saw the president shot from the front, from the railroad track. But he said, we don't believe they have credible testimony, but I don't want you to say anything else about that. In all probability, there was a conspiracy, i.e., there was more than one shooter. This is a very special report. It's the 60th year anniversary of the John Fitzgerald Kennedy assassination. I am your intrepid host, Elliot Marzulli. This is a very special report. We'll be getting into that, but first, a word from our trusted sponsor. Excess belly fat has been deemed the most dangerous fat of them all as it's linked to so many health issues. The reason being, excess belly fat grows deep in the abdominal cavity and puts pressure on some of the body's most vital organs. That's one of the reasons why myself, along with so many people, are beginning to turn to this amazing new substance, which is thoughtfully formulated with science-backed ingredients that promote reduced fat storage. Help to speed up the breakdown of fat, support weight management, reduce cravings, and boost metabolism. Folks, the best part I love is that you can get 51% off for the rest of the month or until they sell out, whichever comes first. Get yours now by going to trimwithla.com. Once again, that's trimwithla.com, trimwithla.com. I'm going to give this 30 days. I'll report back to you, and we'll see what it does. This is a photograph of Dealey Plaza. Um, this was taken circa 2012, 2013, with my good friend, the late uh, Richard Shaw, uh, Rob Skiba. Both men have passed away. It's unbelievable how time filters life in ways that are unexpected. But you can see just how compact this place was. I was 13 years old when the um, I was in Miss Bittner's English class, and the announcement came over the loudspeaker, which I'm sure you guys remember all that. They still do it. And basically, the uh, principal said that uh, John Kennedy had been shot and killed in Dallas. The entire, the entire class gasped. Some people just broke down and cried. And, you know, we're 12 and 13 years old in seventh grade. Uh, there was one woman, one girl, I won't mention her name, but uh, she broke out laughing. Maybe that was the, her way of dealing with it. But this is a shot of Dealey Plaza. <clears throat> the first time I was there, I was completely blown away by just how compact the area was. This is yours truly behind the infamous uh, picket fence, which is on the grassy knoll. <clears throat> Thank you. 
and you can see the X right there in the street. The cars are going by it. That's how close the headshot is to the grassy knoll. It's less than 60 feet away. Back and to the left. I mean, there it is. That's where he was. That's the area over there in the in the um, in the distance where Zapruder uh, stood on that pylon right there and filmed. This is the uh, railroad uh, crossing. There was a building behind here. This is where the bridge was. I should say the bridge still is. Very easy to conceal a gunman behind any of that. And you can see they have a wide open view of Dealey Plaza. That's the grassy knoll, there's the picket fence. And right there in the parking lot, if I'll, I'll use my cursor, see this area right here in the parking lot? See where the, the wall comes down like this and then it cuts over and there's, there's the picket fence which dies into this wall? Right underneath that is the storm drain. That's where the storm drain is. So essentially, if, some, if there is a shooter on the grassy knoll, he blows Kennedy's heads off, head off and then he walks, you know, what, less than 30 yards and there's the storm drain and he's gone. And he's absolutely gone. And here's some of the, the the signage that shows us what the grassy knoll looks like. This, let me stop that for a second. Let me go back here. Right, right here, I'll use my cursor again, is where Abraham Zapruder filmed um, the Zapruder film, which has become known as the Zapruder film, named after, of course, Abraham Zapruder. Um, do I believe it's been doctored? Yes, I do. But uh, that's my problem, I guess. <clears throat> so this is JFK. He's now in the presidential motorcade. This is uh, JFK and the motorcade uh, leaving Love Field in Dallas, Texas. The two men right next to that uh, JFK's limo are Secret Service. They should be standing on the platforms which are attached to the rear bumper. They are called to stand down. They never ever reach their position on that rear bumper, which means that Kennedy is a sitting duck. So here's the, here's the motorcade right here. And you will notice that um, you see him coming down Houston. So if Oswald is in the sixth floor uh, school book depository window, which you can see right here by, by, it says letter A. So the shot is when Kennedy is coming at him, coming down Houston, but he makes this ridiculous turn on, on Elm Street. And Oswald, if he is in the sixth story, waits and waits and waits before uh, the fatal headshot happens. In my opinion, Oswald had absolutely nothing to do with it. He was nothing more than a patsy. Uh, J.F. Kennedy was shot dead during an official visit to Dallas, November 22nd, 1963. Here's the motorcade. You can see the people, lots of smiles on the people in the crowd, people waving, um, some more somber people, but most people are, are smiling. He was uh, um, greeted, uh, I think, with, with open arms. You will notice something on the rear uh, once again, you'll see the handholds, and they are attached to the rear bumper. I'm sure you can all see that. And there's a platform there with the Secret Service. There should be two men, one on either side of that car. They are not there. They are absent from that picture, which essentially means JFK is a sitting duck. This came in from Fox News last year. I had never seen this before. Here we see one of, the, one of the agents, one of the Secret Service men, realizing that the protocol has been breached, going back to the previous slide. There are the, the, the handholds uh, attached to the, to the trunk, and, and behind that, directly attached to the rear bumper, are those two stands, one on either side of the tire that you see, which enables a Secret Service man to stand up and fully shield the president. And if something happens, <clears throat> They're like three feet away. 
they they jump over that um, that trunk lid and they're protecting the president. So we see here a Secret Service man. Now you can see his right hand holding on to that that um, that handheld bracket, for lack of a better word. Here's another shot. I have never seen these pictures before. <clears throat> Obviously, JFK has not been shot yet. There he is again. He's being told to stand down. How do I know that? There's his body language right there. He's looking back to the rear car and basically saying like, what? That's body language to me. He's saying, why am I not um, on the back of this bumper shielding the president? But alas, that's not what happened. And the bullet entered, I believe, at JFK's right temple and instantly blew out the back of JFK's head causing a skull flap to flip quickly forward, spraying brain matter into the air, upward, forward. And also when, when Jackie goes back, the entire trunk is sprayed with JFK's brain matter. You can see Jackie there. You can actually see some of the, some of the brain matter uh, on the trunk behind us. So finally, after JFK has been shot, now that Secret Service man climbs aboard the back of the presidential limo. By this time, JFK essentially is dead. Um, Jackie is attempting to gather what's left of his brains. Um, they've been blown out the back of his skull. So if Oswald's the shooter, that's not what you would see. Everything would be sprayed forward because of the impact of the bullet, but that's not what happened. And here's the ambulance arriving at Parkland Hospital. And this is a crime scene and already they are removing evidence. Who, why is the trunk open for crying out loud? What is going on with that? That whole, that whole limousine should be treated as a crime scene, and of course it wasn't. What really happened to JFK? His doctors reveal new details of the assassination 60 years later, and this is why we are doing this special report. Doctors at Dallas Parkland Hospital say they kept quiet about a wound in President John F. Kennedy's throat for 60 years. But the doctor said that after the president was declared dead, those observations, if declared publicly, would be dangerous. In other words, <clears throat> they were being threatened, and this is why. Dr. Malcolm Perry, who has since died, was the chosen doctor to answer the public via a press conference after the official declaration of the president's death. At the press conference, and this is on film, Dr. Perry, in describing the wound pointing to his throat, said he thought that it looked like an entrance wound. When Dr. Perry left the room, someone came up to him. Dr. Perry thought maybe he was a Secret Service man. And he told Dr. Perry, you must never ever say that that was an entrance wound again, if you know what's good for you. That is a threat. That is the way the game is played. 60 years later, most of the players are gone. They're deceased. Isn't it amazing how now this comes out, that the, the, that the, the wound in Kennedy was an entrance wound? That's what we all believe. When you watch the film JFK, and you look at the Zapruder film, and the head snaps back and to the left, the fatal shot was, in my opinion, from the grassy knoll at less than 60 feet away. There was more than one shooter. Unseen footage shows doctors who treated JFK after his 1963 assassination, challenging official, the official narrative that Lee Harvey Oswald was the lone gunman. In my opinion, folks, Oswald was never near a rifle that day, did not fire a shot. He declared he was a patsy. He had no idea what he was being charged for. And one of the last interviews, he says, no, I have not been charged with the, the killing of JFK, was a patsy. Dr. Robert McClellan, who died um, and at 89 years old in 2019, and was the assistant professor of surgery at the hospital in 1963, said, in all probability, there was a conspiracy. There was more than one shooter. Continuing, Dr. Kenneth uh, Salyer, who was then a first year resident at the hospital and died in 2020, said, when I saw the autopsy pictures, I thought somebody had tampered with the whole thing and it made me very suspicious. Dr. Joe Goldstrich, who was a fourth year medical student at the time asked, how could a gunshot from the rear peer, peel the scalp from the front back? So there you go. 
the headshot came in from a left temple, and that's why these are medical doctors. And of course, there'll be naysayers and debunkers who will assure us that, oh, no, 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 these doctors were mistaken. Not so fast, citizen. They've waited 60 years to come out. There's Lee Harvey Oswald. Uh, I do not believe he had anything to do with the assassination, and he was the patsy for the deal. Anyway, folks, it's been 60 years. Since then, we've had two presidents, Ronald Reagan, and they tried to shoot him, and they are desperately trying to keep someone from running on the Republican ticket, and I think you know who I'm talking about. If I even mention his name on my YouTube channel, that could, uh, maybe they'll censor the whole thing, or they'll shadow ban me. Free speech has been lost in this country, and it's absolutely tragic. And unless the American people stand up and push back against those who are controlling the narrative, against those who are quashing free speech, we don't have a republic anymore. We have a banana republic. We have neo-fascism. That's what it is. I don't like maybe what you say, but I value your right to say it. And so should it be here on YouTube and on every other social media platform. How dare they silence anyone who has an opposing um, viewpoint. Thanks so much for watching. That's it. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. We will be back tomorrow with another show because we don't stop doing what we are doing. I think uh, that documentary with the Parkland Hospital doctors is well worth the watch. Check it out. Thanks so much for watching.